Hi, I'm Dave and welcome back to Brentech IT Support. Today we're going to be looking at some common connection problems that people are having with the Synology Drive and how to resolve them. It's relatively simple and it's just a case of having to know your username and password and the server detail, the server address, for the Quick Connect. And we'll just show you how to do that now. You come to your Synology Drive in the bottom corner, sometimes it's hidden in amongst your hidden icons. I always just drag it out into here to show it fully as that makes life a lot easier. So you just left click on it and you can see what you have recently been synchronizing and what's happened there. Click on the three dots to enter the menu option and click settings. Now, if you're used to seeing this and you don't want to, you can just scroll through it or just click don't show this again and then click the X and that will get rid of it. I'll leave it running because I just like to have it there for other videos that I make. Now, this is showing you what you have got synchronized and their status. This shows you their backups and what's happening here. Now, if this is at all red or gray on either that or these, they're the ones that are having a problem. Now, normally what it is, is you need to come to your edit connection. That should be a unique name for each of your devices that you're synchronizing or backing up. The server address will be your unique server address. And then you put in your username and password. If you have SSL selected, make sure you select it. If not, make sure it's unselected. Make sure username and password is ty typed in correctly and then click done. Now that will reset the account because what can happen is the IP address of the server can change. Some of the uh, SSL certifications can change with your date timestamps and it could just crash out because of that and just lose connection. So re-entering your details will resynchronize it and get it up and running again. Obviously, of course, what might have happened is for some reason you might have paused something and so it'll be grayed out and paused. If so, just come back to it and click resume and you've got that running there. And again, exactly the same thing with the backup tasks. You just click on backup settings, connection, make sure your server, username and password are correct. You have to re-enter it each time you come to here, so please make sure you do know your username and password. If not, you have to either reset it or find it where it's been sent to you if it has, or ask for your admin to reset it for you. Again, make sure your SSL is selected if necessary, and you can just click apply, and that will just re-ping the server with your login details and re-establish the connection if something has changed obviously if your IP address changes or the server's IP address changes for whatever reason then that could uh, cause the connection to be lost and just need to be reset. Also in the backup settings you can choose what files and folders you want to back up. Now normally I don't back up too many folders from this because there's a lot of junk that you don't need backed up. If you do want to do a backup just go to your users, your username and I'll just say your document, desktop, documents, your music and your pictures and videos, they're probably the only ones you need to back up because you shouldn't really be saving stuff elsewhere. If you are and you know that, then obviously make the appropriate choices there. But those are generally where things are automatically saved by default. One thing I'd never bother backing up is downloads because that's stuff you've got off the internet and you can download again. So that's completely pointless in downloading and backing up. So you can leave those as they are, but if you've made any changes, obviously click apply. Now, global settings, you, this is where you can have things changed, such as notifications. Uh, you can say keep notifications for files and events, and that's where you get little pop-ups in the bottom corner. And you can just change how the um, synchronizations and backups are done. Normally just leave that as is when it's set up, as that's generally a very good way of it doing it and just close that. Now what I normally do is when I set it up, I actually create my own file within C drive. And here you can see that I've created a Synology drive folder. If I come to there, I've got my extra folders that I'm using here. And you can just add a new folder like this and give it any name, doesn't matter. And that doesn't make it sync. That's purely just creating a place to save it where I know it's saved and it won't be backed up. 
So if I want to add a new directory to it, you come down to here, click on P buttons, settings, let me just close that, and you click create. You let keep if you've already keyed in your details, it's memorized them, you can just click next. Otherwise, you need to add another technology, or you could actually have more than one server that you're running from and you need to have a different connection there. So it I've already set selected them all, so I haven't got any available. Oh, actually I do. Okay, I'll I'll select this one, click OK, and now I'm going to select this folder, edit this, and I am going to pop this into my Synology Drive test folder. I don't need to create an empty folder because I've already created it. You can then click OK, click Done, and that is now synchronizing with the server. You can see the icons now changed, and that's now being synchronized. So if you come into here, we can see what is being synchronized. Now this icon means that the file is currently only on our server. If you right click on it, we can come to Synology Drive and we've got the option of pin copy permanently. So if we do that, it's now getting the file and it's now pinned permanently. You can help tell that from the solid green circle with the little tick. Or we can come back to here, we can say unpin and now it's gone to a white circle with a green tick. The difference between this is one, once you turn the computer on, will automatically go to update it if it's been pinned. So if you've got pinned permanently, it will always try and keep the latest version on both your client and server. If you're just having it where it's been accessed on the client, next time you open that file, it will have to re-download it if there's a change. You can browse previous versions so you can see what other versions there were of it or you can click on free up space and that removes it from your system and it leaves it on the server so it doesn't delete it from the server if you do delete it from here it will delete it from the server so if you just wanted space back just go and do the free up space option to free up your local hard drive okay when you've got a selection of files and you just want to open one of them. We can see that all of them at the moment are still just only on our server and not locally. But if you click on this image and open it up, you can see it starts syncing it, downloads the image, and we have it. Close it. Now it's downloaded that one locally. It's also downloaded the two either side of it as well, so that you can have quick access to those because it assumes you're probably going to want to look at those images as well, which is perfectly fair enough and a very good feature. And if you don't want them, again, you can always just right click, go in there and go free up space. And that'll take that one off. You can also do it with a group of them as well by selecting them. Again, free up space. Now, also with Drive, there is a history facility where you can look at previous saved versions of a file. So I know I've made changes to this one, so we'll come here, come to Synology Drive, and we can browse previous versions. And you can see that we've got nine different versions of that file. So you can see the date and time that we've changed them, and then you can download it to the computer, and you can choose where to save the new file to, you can rename it, so you don't overwrite the original. So that if you know you've been working on a file and you've made a change by mistake and overwritten your file, you can actually come back to an old version and pick up where you left off, removing that error. Or if you had something like the CryptoLocker virus, you could recover an old copy. Potentially that is a, another benefit of it. Also, if you just got corrupt data, if you're in the middle of doing some work, and you went to save it and there's a power cut or something just went wrong and it caused the save file to get corrupted, you'd have technically lost all your work. But this way you can go back to a previous saved instance of it and you'd have lost some work, but only from the previous point. So you won't have to redo all of your entire project. So that's a wonderful, wonderful feature of this software, which is one of the reasons why we recommend it. That's really it now for now. 
I hope you enjoyed that video and found it easy to follow. If you have any further questions, please do just drop a comment down below. If you did like the video and found it helpful, please do give it a good like, thumbs up, comment and subscribe. As always, take care. Bye for now.